glary, glary, glary. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Glary sent me another guitar. I know, another Glary, but <laughs> thanks for watching anyways. So I decided to review this one because I think it's a new body style for him, and it's different enough from everything else I usually review, so I thought I wanted to check it out. So this kit will include a gig bag here. Usually these aren't the best, the zippers, you can tell they don't always completely close, but they, they still work. You get a lead as well as your whammy bar and a pick. I mean, it really is a pretty good beginner set. You get everything you need, including a little amp. I don't think I'm gonna bother doing a demo of these because I've done it in other videos. They're not the best amps, but they're good enough just to start out on. But it's kind of like a, an Ibanez RG style, if I'm not mistaking. I mean, I don't know a lot about Ibanez or guitars like this, but I really enjoyed Glary's Stratocaster. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say that is the best guitar that they uh, make a copy of. So this is kind of similar to that in body style, just a little bit pokier there, but, but it has what they have in the Burning Fire pickup set. And I remember I wasn't a huge fan of that guitar, but it's got the awesome shark fin inlays and kind of an ibanez -y headstock. But let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take a quicker look at it. From Glary, they considered this their 170 type electric guitar. At this point in time, only a $92 bundle set with an amp is available on their website. This is an HSH configuration guitar with a 20 watt practice amp. They offer this bundle in sunset finish, white as seen in this video, and pure black. Alright, so here's what we get for $91. I was right, this has the exact same pickup set as found in their Burning Fire model. So it's a humbucker in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge with a single coil. Now something to mention quality control wise on this one, they didn't quite install the spring right there. They drilled two separate holes. So this pickup kind of sits slanted, which is not so good, but I should be able to fix that pretty easily. But here's what your routes look like in case you want to modify this. It's not like a huge swimming pool route or anything. It is specific to a humbucker, humbucker and middle. Yep, so that installed correctly now. So it's got a five-way switch with a master volume and a master tone. In the bridge pickup position, it's 11.39k ohms. I believe the second position will be these two at a 3.95, then just your middle at 596, then these two at 391, then just your neck pickup at 1111. This doesn't have a Floyd Rose or anything crazy, it's just your standard Stratocaster style one. The website says these are a basswood body with a maple neck and a rosewood fretboard. And the only thing I've done with this fretboard is I conditioned it with this Ernie Ball Wonder Wipe. It was just in the case of a guitar that I got, so I thought I'd try it on something cheap because I've never used one of those before. Eh, it worked okay. I prefer just the Dunlop 65 Lemon Oil stuff though. I mean, the frets didn't necessarily need polishing or anything, but the thing with these guitars, when you get them, they're always really dry feeling. They'll kind of have a residue to them that's kind of dusty, so you will definitely need to clean these things off if you decide to purchase one of these. And that goes for any body style. This is the 170, but that's just how every glary guitar has been. How's the fret work? Well, it seems pretty smooth right here. I'm not feeling any sharp ends, so that's important. But on some of these, you can see like an open slot, like the fret isn't actually large enough or something. It doesn't really affect anything, but I figured we'd take a closer look here. And we'll see if the frets are level. A little, little bit high. A little bit. A little. So for the most part, there's only like two or three high frets. And that's kind of why I got this one. I wanted to learn some fret working. So I'm going to order up some tools and just see if I can learn to dial things in on this guitar. I will say there's quite a few imperfections by the nut. It looks like some glue seeped out right there. And uh, the nut could definitely be cut better than that. I think it's a little bit high yet. But you have your standard overseas style truss rod that uses an Allen key. But the neck is straight and it's perfectly playable. I get a nut width of 1.66 inches, which increases to 2.02 .02 at the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9,
and it increases to 0.96. These are always super chunky necks on these things, which is kind of the opposite of what this guitar would normally have. These guys are supposed to have a 25 and a half inch scale length, but it looks like it's a little longer than that. And it is a 24 fretted instrument. Moving on to the back side here, you've got your output jack on the side and you have your main control cavity right here. It just kind of has this one back plate that only has two screws for it. The pretty standard stuff in here, five way switch, two tiny little pots. And here's your tremolo unit. It is set up extremely stiff, like it barely even moves. It is a bolt on neck. It has some carve away right here, so it's a little bit more comfortable to play higher up. But this neck is super huge. Once again, constructed with a scarf joint and you have six on a side tuners. Now I will say the action on this one, it's a little bit too high. This will show you what it's like kind of at the 12th fret. Then we'll move it up here to the first fret. So if you're planning on getting one of these, you might need it professionally set up. I think if you just personally bought one of these for your kid to start to learn to play on and this is what they had to deal with, yeah, they might not particularly like this one, but you can adjust it yourself. You just use the provided Allen keys with these guys. I mean, the neck itself is straight. I think the action height issues is actually coming from the nut being a little bit too tall. It needs filed down some and then some fine tuning here, but I really don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to professional setups. These things are really lightweight. It's just a little bit over five pounds, but I'm betting it's going to be neck heavy. Let's go ahead and do a tone test for this. First off, despite thinking it'd be neck heavy, it's not. So it actually is pretty comfortable on you, super lightweight, but the output jack is cutting in and out on me. It's not actually gripping it completely. You can see there's like a giveaway right here. So you just kind of need to go in there and tighten that a little bit by bending the prong. So this is just your neck pickup. position. Third. Fourth. opinion it's the first third and fifth position that are usable I'm not a fan of the in-betweens they're kind of out of phase in sound and the output gets cut drastically on them It's good in certain situations, but I, it's not necessarily something I dig at this point. So let's go ahead and throw some dirt on the Freedmen. gotten to take a look at the Glary 170 model. What are my final opinions on this one? Well, the pros are it's $92 shipped to your door with a practice amp. You get a gig bag, all the needed accessories you could possibly want. I mean, it's very economical. Pretty much anybody could buy one of these. And I've got to give it to Glary. I think this is probably one of their most attractive models. I mean, it is a visually stunning guitar and it, it sounds okay. 
Personally, I prefer the main positions, the one, three, and five, not so much the two and four in this case, but you could easily upgrade these humbuckers as well. So now the cons, the action's too high on this one. And I believe that really does stem down to the nut just being a little bit too tall here with the slots not filed down far enough because it's nearly impossible to fret down the first note without you know, bending it way sharp because of the pressure just to get it down there. So I think that's kind of a QC issue on Glary's part, but that's nothing that can't easily be fixed with a set of nut files. The output jack, it's pretty lame. It's not quite tight enough, but again, as I was talking about, fairly easy fix there. And the only other thing I wanna talk about that I feel is bad is the fat neck. It, it doesn't make sense on this model. Fat neck Stratocaster, okay, that makes sense, but this is like a shredder style guitar. They like their pencil thin stuff. So this one doesn't necessarily get my seal of approval. However, if I would have got one that had a better setup from the factory, I probably would have recommended it on a learning basis. And that's pretty much what these Glary guitars are good for. If you can't afford something a little bit more high end, I mean, 300 bucks will get you a really quality guitar. But if you can't afford that and you just want something to start with, you can't find anything locally on Craigslist, these are a good option to get something in your hands or if you want to learn guitar modifications. So if you're interested in a Glary brand product, I'll leave a link in the description. That link does support the channel. So please consider buying from there if you're interested in one of these. But that concludes this review and demo of the Glary 170 model. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow for Trade Tuesday. Take care.